Yo, what's up everyone, Akari, and coming to you with a new video. Today, we're going to talk about Giovanna. If you're somebody who's looking to pick up Giovanna either as a secondary or as a competitive player, in order to get your disadvantageous matchups covered, or you're somebody who just recently picked up the game and wants to play Giovanna, this is the perfect guide for you. Today, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about this character, and go over all of her minute details on how you can become better with the character, and overall just play her in general. So, some basic info on Giovanna. She has the second highest HP in the entire game. She has the highest HP if she has a 100% tension, but I'll get to that in a little bit. She is one of the fastest characters in the game. The only character that's been faster than her are Millie and Chip, so she's the first fastest character in all of Guilty Gear. She has a really good neutral and insane dash, as you can see right here. Her dash is incredible. Compared to other characters, this is insane. And uh, her neutral because of that is also really good, because she can, she can dash and dash back. She's able to get in fast and quickly. And move around. She also is the queen of plus frames, meaning that she has a ton of moves that are plus on block. For example, her 236k is plus on block, her trova is plus on block, which is her overhead, and then her CS is also plus on block. And with those type of things, she can condition her opponent into mashing because they don't know when exactly they're able to get out. So if you condition them to mash right after a specific move that is plus on block, you'll be able to gain advantage really, really quickly and get momentum really, really quickly with Giovanna, which is really important. Getting momentum with this character is one of the most important things in order to keep moving, keep doing more damage, keep elevating this character. But yeah. So, if you're somebody who just wants to see some beginner combos or some advanced combos, those will be the very end of the video. Right now, what I would like to explain is her overall neutral, her overall advantage, and overall disadvantage state and what you can do with it. Combos will be at the very end, so if you just want to see the combo montage, please skip this part. And... For anybody who is still listening, let's start with her neutral. So, for anybody who doesn't know the terminology of Guilty Gear, you can just see my inputs on the on the left here. So you can see which button I'm pressing and test it out for yourself if you have no clue about the names in Guilty Gear whatsoever. So just pay attention to that, but if you already know what I'm doing, we're just gonna go over it. In neutral, as Giovanna, you have a bunch of options here. You can reach your opponent with an HS 2D. You can also just do you can also do 2D. 2D always works too if they're trying to press a move. You can do 2D into 2 1 4 k as a combo. As, as well as also you can just dash back. So you have a bunch of options you want that you can do at the very start. You can try to approach someone and immediately get into advantage. But for the most part, the safe things on how you get in on somebody is going to be with 5k, 2k, 2D, and 5HS. That is most likely what's going to happen that you can do in neutral. If you're playing footsies with somebody and they're trying to approach you, if you dash in with 5k, you're most likely going to be saved due to 5k being minus 2. So you can attack somebody like that, like so for example, you can rush in and already get advantage and already be in the corner. Same thing goes for HS, just because those moves have low end lag. You could, for example, use her signature move, which is her far slash. The problem with far slash though is if you miss it. You see how much end like this has compared to like a 5k? Like I'm gonna demonstrate this. I'm gonna crouch after pressing both buttons, right? So you see how I like I immediately can go down here? And this with far slash. You see how slow this is in comparison? Or even with HS. This is really slow in comparison. So it is rewarding if you dash in and do this because you can extend your block string and attack. The problem just being it has a high risk. I see most Giovanna is usually using this as their main tool and it is a really good, good tool to use just make sure to not overuse it the things that you should be using in neutral are going to be 2d 5k and 5hs so make sure this is like what basically your neutral pen is press safe buttons and you will be able to do it just fine but yeah overall neutral is pretty solid because she has this amazing dash so she can like dash in or like go, go behind her opponent with 214s so she is able to do a bunch of stuff for sure but you can experiment this for yourself. I just gave you like the basics on what you should be doing. This is basically the safest way to approach with Giovanna. Now that we talked about how to get in with Giovanna, let's talk about how to continue your advantage with her. Because she has so many options, she is obviously able to do whatever she wants on block anyway, due to her having a ton of plus frames. So let's just go into the corner and I'm going to show you some basic blocks with her that you can do. So the most basic block string that will most likely happen in neutral is going to be you hit a CS or a, or a far S on, on block and then after this you have a bunch of options. You can press HS afterwards and then you have the options to either 214S which is her overhead, 236K which is her like spin move, her cami spin move and 214K which is basically her, her block spin finisher for the most part. So 
These are the basic options, and here's the game plan of all of them. 214S and 236K are both safe on block, which means after you've done these moves, you're able to continue your pressure. You're able to continue the blocks down. You're able to go again. The same thing with CS. Because CS is plus free, you can continue here and do whatever. But the basic game plan is the following. After you condition your opponent for the plus frames, what you can do is you can do a delayed 214k in order to punish them. Which means the following thing. Let's take Sol for example. Let's say he's gonna counter attack afterwards with heavy slash, whatever. Let's say we delay our 214k here. You see how this hits? Where in comparison, if I do it fast, this won't hit. And then he's able to punish. Right? So, the reason why you do the delayed version is very simple. Because of Giovanna's moves having a lot of startup here, on both of these moves, right? On her overhead and on her 236k that both grant her plus, people obviously want to get out of them before they hit them. Because plus on block is not a good situation for them. So, what can you do? 214k delayed. Because they can't really react to it, having it be delayed grants you to punish them for it. So after that you can do a simple combo, have them in disadvantage again, and then you can rinse and repeat the entire process. So that's like one basic thing to think about. So basically what you have as Giovanna is the following. Just the most basic blocks drawn. Close slash into far slash into heavy slash into 214k into 214s, 236k, 214s. One of these three. It's going to be one of these three options your most basic combo lenders, right? And deciding on that, you can continue the pressure however you want. What you can do as well is you can just do very, very basic things and you can try to do fake pressure where you try the same thing as in 2 and 4k with other buttons. So you can do 2k, 2k for example, right? You can do 2k, 2k into 2 and 4k. 5k, 5k into 2 one for s you can press any button really afterwards. You just gotta like make sure to apply some type of pressure, like you can do mid, low, high, or you can do high and then try to go for, try to go for a low right after. Like you have a bunch of options that you can do, you just gotta be, you just gotta be aware of when you will be able to do these type of mix-ups and that will just come with experience. Right now just be able to remember like the most basic block strings and be able to work according from that afterward. Now that we talked about her block stuns, now we can talk about what actually happens after you get in with a hit. So after you get in with a hit, Giovanna has something called a safe jump setup. If you don't know what a safe jump setup is, is basically there's two types of knockdowns in this game. The first one being this knockdown where the character immediately techs in his back. You can see how he's like right back there, but there's another version, which is right here, where they're still laying on the ground. And when they're still laying on the ground, what you can do is Juvana, you're able to press CS or 5K in order to get a safe jump setup, which means it is impossible for any character to get a hit on Giovanna, either it be a super, a DP, or anything while she does this setup. So, a very easy way to practice is just use 2D and then like just be close and use 2D and then you can press CS, right? And then you already can see how they're getting up again. This is the second type. So what you do afterwards is you immediately jump after this. So once you hit CS you jump, then hold dash or like do an immediate dash and then press her jump heavy. If you're some of the players who don't have dash as a button, I would highly suggest it on one of the shoulder buttons. Because the shoulder buttons make it very easy to go from CS to jump afterwards, so you can have an immediate jump. This is when I try to do it automatic. Like, this is when I try to do it without the jump, right? You see how this is, like, really, really slow compared to this? Like, this is my regular setup. You see how much higher I was in the first one when I tried to do it manually? Don't try to do it manually. Get yourself a button for it. A specific button will help you a lot with Giovanna in general or in Guilty Gear. So that is something you can work with. But yeah, as I was saying, so a safe jump setup basically allows you to continue your pressure with Giovanna even further and even further. And this can literally go until infinity. Like either until you get a wall break or until you've done enough damage to kill your opponent. But yeah, so if they mash, they will get hit. And if they don't mash, you will be safe. You will be able to pressure your opponent right after. Again, because they have to block. Alright, I will show you this is safe by demonstrating this real quick. So, let's have Soul after hit, let's have him do his Volcanic Viper, right? Which is his DP. So, like, you can't get through this. Let's set this up. So, just as a test, you see, 
As you can see, this Volcanic Viper does not work. I'm trying to attack him afterwards. I can't. You, you saw how I mashed the button there and I couldn't? Alright, now let's do a safe jump setup. You see how I blocked it right there? I hit him and blocked it at the same time. So, with this, you're able to continue your pressure. Punish him for it. And you're back. And now he's gonna mash again. And you're back. Let him do it again. Right? Like, you can continue this forever. You can just do safe jump setup after safe jump setup after safe jump setup. With enough practice, you're able to do this. And players like players who like to mash DP are gonna have a very hard time against Giovanna because of this. You are just able to avoid DP entirely with safe jump setups. I do have to say, though, they are able to grab you afterwards. So you gotta be careful. They are able to grab you if you just stand there and block. So you gotta do something. So you can either dash back or jump or whatever, so that is the one option they have afterwards. Okay, so this is the advantage state, now we're going to talk about disadvantage. And the thing about disadvantage with Giovanna is she has some really fast buttons. So right here in the corner for example, if you're up against Soul, she's able to press 5k in order to get out of hit stun with her buttons depending on the, the block stun. But mostly what you're looking for in disadvantage as Giovanna is going to be to go for her, her 2k or her 5k in order to get out of it. Those are like her fastest moves besides her P moves, which are both frame 6. So if there's anybody as close to you and did a minus 6 move, which are a lot of combo finishes in Guilty Gear, you're able to get out of it and press a button. If it's going to be tighter, you can play, You can press 2k to get rid of them, you can press 2k twice into 6 to 3k if you're fast enough to gain more of a more, more of a range in order to like work around, because otherwise you're just going to be stuck here still, even though after hitting your opponent. So this is something you have to learn on your own, I can't really teach you how to do that, this is just something you have to practice. But basically her escape options are pretty good, she also has a pretty decent 6p, but she's able to ignore any attacks that are above her chest, so basically like her upper hitbox, which means if somebody hits you with an aerial, you can 6p and punish them for it. If somebody hits you with like, for example, souls, for example, let's say souls 5k, right? Like this is for sure not the best example right now, but you can see it right here. He's using his 5k and I'm able to go through it every time. It, it says counter every single time because I'm going through it, but yeah. Those are basically the options you can use when it comes to disadvantage. Another thing that's also really good with her is roaming cancelling, so like roaming can yellow roaming cancelling to grab. But that isn't really like something you need to worry about right now. Oh, reminds me, something I, I forgot to mention in advantage, especially when people are blocking. So after a while, people are going to get used to your block strings and they're just going to block a lot. Because they can just block against Giovanna, it's just possible. So what you can do actually, is something that is very good, is you can force a grab. So how you force the grab with Giovanna is pretty simple. Remember the, the buttons that I told you that you can do in neutral? You can dash again and do a grab right after. The basic motion for this is the following. You can do a basic block string, right? And then you can press another button, then dash, and then grab. And because you can do this, it allows you to get even more pressure. So the buttons that I would highly advise you to use this on if you want to use it are the ones that are lagless. P, CS, K. Those are the ones that you can use grab with because you can dash immediately after. Like it allows you to dash after, but I would mostly suggest you CS because CS is the fastest and 5k to use if you want to get a grab. You can also just grab in general after a certain while, but if you want to have the easiest version what you do is basically you do a block, like you try to like fake a block string and you dash and you grab them. And then after that you can, you know, do a regular combo, get a wall break, and be able to abuse her advantage state. So, before we go into the combos, there's one last thing I would like to mention with Giovanna, which is her tension meter. So, her tension meter in itself isn't like any other character, because she gets a passive buff. Which means, if she's at 50%, if she's at 50% tension, she has more damage and more health, and she, if she's at 100%, she has more damage and more health. So, as an example right now, let's do a basic combo, right? I'm gonna do the basic combo three times with the different tension meters, and you're going to see the difference. So this right here did 98 damage, right? So remember the number I showed you beforehand, right? Now it's 102. And now if we push it to 100, it's 107. So as you can see, she does get a little bit of a boost, and it does add up over time. Because when you do like a, a basic combo of her, it will add up. Like, it will basically add up to a lot more damage than when she was in the regular form. Which also 
overall makes her more bulkier, more tankier. So getting meter with her is really important. So if you're somebody who's trying to play Giovanna, make sure you go for wall breaks a lot. Because wall breaks enable you to get the, the, the bonus that you want. If you get a bonus, you get even more defense, which will help her more of her health. And the positive bonus allows you to get even more damage going. So she's going to be extra, extra strong if you get wall breaks with Geo. This is really important to note. But yeah, this is the basic game plan for Giovanna and everything. Now we're gonna switch over to the combos. And I include some, some advanced combos, but mostly basic ones that you can pick up and learn. And they should probably not take longer than 10 minutes to learn each. Or like at best like 5 minutes to learn each. You're going to be fine. But yeah, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I upload daily content with Giovanna currently. And I'm also going to participate in a bunch of tournaments and take this game really seriously. So if you're looking for more tips on Giovanna and more help, check out my Discord, check out my YouTube. And I wish you all a good one. Hold on, real quick before this video ends, in the description down below I have more combos for Giovanna, all the advanced combos that you can optimize and practice yourself, it would have taken way too long to put it into this video and it would have been way too complicated, so down in the description below, the first link, there's everything you need to know on how to optimize your Giovanna, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you.